the girl. Sixteen? Where is this? Yeah. East 75th in the base. You are in the muster room at the 21st Precinct, the nerve center. A call is coming through. You will follow by transcription the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st Precinct. All right. The officers are on their way over there now. You wait outside for them. Show them where it is. An ambulance, too. An ambulance is coming. All right. They'll be there right away. 21st Precinct. It's just lines on a map of the city of New York. Most of the 173,000 people wedged into the nine-tenths of a square mile between Fifth Avenue and the East River wouldn't know if you asked them that they lived or worked in the 21st. Whether they know it or not, the security of their homes, their persons, and their property is the job of the men of the 21st Precinct. The 21st, 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants, of whom I'm the boss. My name is Kennelly, Frank Kennelly. I'm captain in command of the 21st. I was working my night tour, 4 p.m. to 8 a.m. It was a cold, windy night, and I was on patrol in sector car number two with patrolman Edward Farrell as operator and myself as recorder. It was about 11.30 p.m., and I had instructed Farrell to drive west on 75th Street from 1st Avenue to Lexington, and then return to the station house where I was due to turn out the platoon for the late tour at midnight. After we crossed 1st Avenue, there was no traffic in the block ahead of us, and I saw no pedestrians. Cold weather keeps them off the streets. It's a good policeman. Our headlights cut a swath in the darkness as we cruised slowly in the long block toward 2nd Avenue. Captain, that old man down there, I think he wants us. Go ahead, pull up. Yes, sir. Okay. Come on, pal. All right. What is her? What's the trouble, Tom? Killing her. Where? In the basement there. Let's go, Farrell. Down there. Watch the step. No, I got my light. All right, hit the door. Get away from her. Get away. I'm killing her. Put your hands. Come here. I'll kill you all. Oh, still there. I mean, I get up again. Get the nippers on him. Now, mister. Stay still or you've got plenty more. He's all right now, Captain. All right, get those hands against the wall. Get them up there. They're all right, okay. Okay. Sit down on the floor. He said sit down on the floor. All right, yeah. Don't kill her yet. I'll kill her. You won't kill anybody, mister. Watch it, Captain. Let me take a look at her. Stay still. No, don't please. It's all right. I'm a police officer. Oh, my side. Hit me my side. She's only a kid, pal. Huh? All right. How old are you? Sixteen. My side. My side is killing. My face. All right. Just take it easy. We'll get help. Watch him, pal. I'm going to call in for an ambulance. I got him, Jeff. Everything okay. Come on upstairs, Tom. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. You know that girl? Yeah, sure, the Truro girl from my building. This building? No, the next building, that, that one, fourth floor here. You know him? No, I never seen him. You live with her folks? Her folks, yes. Yeah. All right, you go upstairs and tell them, okay? Yeah, yeah, tell them. All right, I go. Car 681 to Central, okay? Car 681 to Central. At 388 East 75th Street in the basement. East 753K. That's right. An assault case. Send an ambulance and assistance. K. Okay, 681 21st Precinct. The address. 388 East 75th Street. Car 634 635. Signal 32. The ambulance is responding. K. 634 10 Car 635. Within a few minutes, in response to the radio signal, sector car number four and the sergeant's car were on the job. When the call was heard on the radio monitor by the desk officer at the station house, he notified the 21st squad and Detective James McLeese and Louis DeLuca hurried to the scene. As we waited for the arrival of the ambulance, the assailant, Joe Packus, sat on the floor in a corner of the basement with his back against the wall under the guard of patrolman Farrell. 
The victim's mother had been summoned from the apartment. She tried to comfort the girl. Anita, my baby, my baby. He wanted to kill me, Mom. He tried to. Oh, my baby. Oh. Mrs. Toro, don't touch her, please. Oh, my baby. Where's the doctor? She's got. Now, the ambulance is on the way. Well, where, where is it? <laughs> Mrs. Toro, you'd uh, better stand over here. No. It'd be better for her. Go on, Mom. Go on, baby. Mrs. Toro. Yes, all right. The ambulance will be here right away. Sergeant. Yes, sir. My poor baby. Yes, sir, Captain. Yes. Stay here with the girl. Yes, sir. Is that the ambulance, that siren? Yes, I'm sure it is. Uh, let's go over here, Mr. Toro. I don't like to leave her. I don't like to leave my baby. How old is she? Sixteen. Just sixteen. Is she got? She won't die. No, I think she'll be all right. Excuse me, Captain. Oh, yes, McLeese. Uh, this is the girl's mother, Mrs. Toro, Detective McLeese. I'd like to ask you two questions, Mrs. Toro. Yeah, anything. That's the ambulance? Yes. Good. Oh, my poor baby. This fellow that's Joe Packers, he said he's known her for a long time. Oh, six months, maybe seven. But she don't want anything to do with him. Uh-huh. He comes around to the house, he tears us off. He brings a bottle of whiskey, he sits down in the kitchen. He says he wants to marry her. She don't want anything to do with him. But we're scared. Well, then why didn't you call the police? I said once I would. I said, get out or I call the police. He said, what would the police do to him? Nothing. He'd come back and tear up the house. So I didn't call. He'd come. Anita would lock herself in the bathroom. We were all scared. Well, where was she tonight? Did she have a date with him? Oh, no. She went to a girlfriend's on First Avenue. We do a homework together. Uh-huh. She's a good girl, Anita. She goes to school. She wants to learn. She wants to learn to go to business. All right, bring it in. Over here. They take her where? To a hospital? Yes. What hospital? Could I go? Yes, you can go. I mean, what was he doing? Was he waiting for her on the street? I guess. I don't know. I want to help. Uh, let's leave it to them, Mr. Toro. They know what they're doing. All right, easy. Easy. Oh, Put her on. My baby, my poor baby. Oh, Mom, Mom. Oh. All right, all right. Take it out. Oh. Come to the house. He said, where is she? I said, out. He sat down with a bottle of whiskey for two, three hours. I was scared. Now watch the turn there, easy. All right, Miss. Up with her. He said he'd kill her. He'd kill me. I was glad he went. Easy now. Keep it high. Can I go with her? Can I? Uh, Sergeant. Yes, sir. See that Mrs. Toro gets over to the hospital. Yes, sir. Oh, wait. Wait for me. You can talk to the mother later, can't you, McLeese? Oh, yes, sir. Right now, I want to talk to that bum over there. All right, you men. Don't stand around here. Get back on patrol. How's he doing, pal? All the steam's out of him, Captain. He's no trouble. All right, you get on your feet. Why? You hurt me. Hey, get on your feet. My please. Yes, Captain. What's your name? Packus. Joe Packus. How do you spell that? P-A-K-U-S. And where do you live? East 81st Street, 816. What do you do to justify your existence? What do you mean? Have you got a job? Yeah, I work. Where? Different places. Contractors. I'm a plaster. How old are you? 27. 27, huh? Yeah. Well, you grow gray by the time you're through with this one, mister. I'll teach you to leave that family alone. I'll teach you to stay away from 16-year-old girls. I want to marry her. I love what her. a fine way to show her you love her, isn't it? Almost killing her. You're no good. You're plain no good. I was a little drunk. Oh, that's a great excuse, isn't it? You get half in the bag and you think you own the world. Well, I'll show you what you own. You don't own any part of it. You don't even own your own time. All right, Mike. Take it easy. He should be in the hospital, not her. Well, that's enough. Joe, what are you coming around here making trouble for that family? I told you they didn't want anything to do with you. I want her. I want to marry the girl. She won't speak to me. She won't see me. She can out with other guys. All right, I waited for her tonight. To talk. Or just to talk. When I saw her, she tried to go away. She wouldn't talk. Okay, sister. You'll talk. You'll do what I tell you. You threw her down in the cellar and you beat her up and you almost killed her. And she might die yet. It was a whiskey. I didn't mean it. Sixteen-year-old girl. Sixteen? I don't know. I don't care. I want to marry. She's a woman. And you're a man, huh? Well, not in my book, mister. In my book, you're a nut. A great big cipher. 
The suspect, Joe Pacquius, was taken to the station house in the custody of Patrolman Farrell, the first officer on the scene. Detective McLeese rode with them in sector car number two, and I returned in the sergeant's car just in time to turn off the platoon for the late tour at midnight. At the station house, Pacquius was taken upstairs to the 21st squad, still in the custody of Patrolman Farrell. There, he would be questioned further by detectives and on completion of the investigation, booked in on charges of felonious assault. As the senior officer on duty in the 6th Division during the night, I was called to the 25th Precinct, where a three-alarm fire in a loft building had caused the evacuation of two tenements. It was 2.20 a.m. when I returned to the 21st Precinct and walked into the muster room and around the desk to sign the blotter. Hello, Sergeant. Captain. Uh, Captain. Red. 21st Precinct, Sergeant Collins. What about that poor old girl in the hospital, Red? How bad is she? Uh, two broken ribs, Captain. Her face is pretty badly cut off. No internal injuries, I don't think. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lieutenant Gorman, Iceman bringing in. He made that notification on York Avenue. He got hold of the brother. Okay. All right, Iceman. Did they book that Joe Pacquius yet, Red? No, sir, not yet. They still got him upstairs. Mm-hmm. What about Sal? He's still there. As soon as he's booked in, and you'll get a couple of hours sleep before you have to go to court with him. That's a mean one, that guy, Captain. Sixteen-year-old girl. Yeah. I'll be in my office, then. Yes, sir. 21st Precinct, Sergeant Collins. Oh, Sergeant. Yeah, all right. You take your meal now, right? Okay. Yes, sir, Captain. Sergeant, I'll tell you what. I want you to... What's that? In the back room. Come on, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Somebody fell down the steps. Yes, sir. That's what happened. Are you all right? Pacquiao. What happened, Mac? He tripped, fell down a whole flight of stairs. Did he? Pacquiao. He's out. He's out like a light. What's going on? What happened? Where were you, Farrell? He's your prisoner. Well, Captain, what? Uh, Just a second. Pacquiao. Come on. Pacquiao. Sergeant, ring for an ambulance, will you? Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Well, he's out, all right. All right, Farrell. Where were you? Oh, we'll take him down to book him. He left his hat in the squad room. I went back inside for it. You were alone with him, McLeese. That's right, Captain. Yes, sir. How'd he fall? I don't know. He tripped, I guess. Did he? On what? Captain, I didn't lay a hand on him. If anybody deserved to get thrown down those stairs, he did, but I didn't lay a hand on him. We'll find out about that, McLeese. We'll find out about that right away. You're listening to 21st Precinct, a factual account of the way police work in the world's largest city. Since 1910, the work output of each of us has more than doubled. In the same period, machine power has increased four and a half times, and the average annual income has gone from $2,400 a year to about $4,000 a year in equivalent purchasing power. In spite of all this, about 18 hours has been cut off the average work week in the same period. Those facts are but a few in the great story of our American economic system, a story that adds up to this for all of us. The better we produce, the better we live. Now back to 21st Precinct and Captain Frank and I. Any unusual occurrence concerning a prisoner, injury, death, escape, or attempted suicide is a grave matter. The commanding officer of the precinct concerned is required to make an immediate and thorough investigation and forward his report to the office of the chief inspector and the New York State Commissioner of Corrections. Joe Pacquiao did not regain consciousness by the time the ambulance arrived. He was taken to Bellevue Hospital. In the meantime, I had instructed the desk officer, Lieutenant Gorman, to telephone Lieutenant Matt King, commander of the 21st Detective Squad, at his home and inform him of the incident. Lieutenant King was at the station house within 25 minutes and sat in my office as I questioned first Patrolman Farrell. No, sir, I didn't leave him for a minute, not since I brought him in. You got him into the station house about five minutes to 12. How come you didn't bring him downstairs to be booked until 25 after 2? Well, McLeese was conducting an investigation, Captain. Well, there wasn't much investigation that needed conducting, was there? You were an eyewitness to the assault, so was I. Yes, sir. And you had another witness, that old man that stopped you. Yes, sir. Did McLeese make any threats against this Joe Pacquiao up in the squad room? No, sir. You just talked to him calmly? Well, not exactly calmly, Captain. McLeese didn't think much of the guy who did. Did either you or he use any violence in the squad room? 